Welcome, and thanks for joining us. I'm Beth Myers, your host and the owner of Arrival Coaching. I'm a Law of Attraction Empowerment Coach, Mentor, and Speaker. This year's Thrive Movement is a mother-daughter series, and it's highlighting thriving in real relationships. Real is real empowerment allows love. Thank you for watching as I introduce you to women who are daughters, some are mothers, and some are not. Each are welcomed to share, to reflect on their role as a daughter and or a mother, and how that has influenced their journey to thrive, and explore with them how they embrace the real relationships to acknowledge their own emotions and empower their connections with others, especially with other women. Today, I'd like to introduce you to my friend and colleague, Tammy Eldridge. We attracted one another as coaching buddies in the Quantum Success Coaching Academy, a 12-month Law of Attraction certification program founded by Christy Whitman. And we've been daughters of the universe on our journey to thrive, not just survive. Tammy, I am so thrilled to have you join me today. And I'd love for you to tell us more about who Tammy Eldridge is. Well, thank you, Beth, for inviting me on today. It's both an honor and absolute pleasure. I love spending every minute I can with you. And even in this uh, gosh, more serious role than what we usually <laughs> have together. Uh, but I also am a law of attraction coach. I specialize in helping people find their way through their traumatic experiences in life, things they never expected to happen, and they're trying to find a new perspective and a way of feeling better about that situation and about where they're going in the future. So um, I, I, I absolutely adore assisting others, and I feel that Beth's work is also just so incredibly important, and I love the idea of the mother daughter relationship and how that impacts us and, and molds us as we move out into the world. So delighted, delighted to be here. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I am just thrilled to have you here <laughs> and connect with you in this way to, to share some of our journey um, of being daughters. I, I love the daughters of the universe because we just are, and we are Wonder Women too, aren't we? Yeah, it does sound rather uh, superhero-ish. Uh, yes. <laughs> we would get a special secret league, or apparently, or something. Yes, <laughs> we do. We do. And we have such power that just a lot of times does not get acknowledged within ourselves and within society as much. And I think we're, we're starting to turn the page to a new chapter uh, in our society um, with a lot of things that have happened um, within really the last year in particular. And uh, so it really is about peeling some of those labels back and really getting at what the core is for each of us as women. So my first question I have for you, Tammy, is, you know, what are like 10 words that you can think of that you use to describe who you are as a woman, a daughter of the universe, and um, or how other people would describe you. Okay, well, I, I had to give this some thought because I thought, um, I thought that I could come up easily with more than 10, and I was surprised at how I got stuck at number seven. Um, and, that, and then I had to give it a little more thought. So um, the words that I came up with for myself are um, happy, curious, adventurous, supportive, funny, loving, kind, practical, spiritual, and the last one I came up with is intelligent, and then I wrote it down and realized I spelt intelligent incorrectly. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that goes back to the humorous, um, even, even if it's by accident. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. It, you know, I, I, from knowing you from what we met each other in 2014. Is that right, Tammy? I think so, yeah. 
Yeah, the spring of 2014. And you embody all of those qualities. I would use those words to describe you as well. And what intrigues me is how much you know about lots of different topics. And you truly are intelligent and have such knowledge in so many different areas. And I always love learning from you. Thank you. Thank you. I You're do. welcome. I, I like a sponge. You just absorb everything around me. Yes, that, that's awesome. That is awesome. So which of those five words would you use to describe yourself as a daughter? I think loving and kind are the, the two that pop out first. Mm -hmm. uh, but supportive, I think that one's probably the most important. And um, the spiritual and funny are important <laughs> components of that relationship as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you bring up that spiritual component because I think for both you and I, from our conversations that we've had, there's been a lot of healing that has happened through that spiritual connection that we both have become or come back to um, in a different way in our older years um, mm -hmm. to really be more connected with um, how we are as daughters, how we show up in our lives each and every day. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I was brought up uh, in the church, going to mm -hmm. Sunday school every Sunday, and I uh, definitely um, structured my youth and my understanding of the universe and how it works uh, in a way that was a fabulous foundation for the things that I learned later in life. And it's only enhanced my relationship with God, with the universe, and, and how I approach life. So, uh, yeah, that spiritual part, and I have to uh, attribute that component of it definitely to my mom um, for creating that, that kind of biblical foundation. And, you know, I know we're not talking about dads today, but dad was very much the, you know, get out in the woods and, and feel it. Uh, um, and so that, that, that dynamic duo that is also my parents mm -hmm. um, has really helped shape me who I am now. Mm. Oh, you just expressed that so beautifully. And I just got chills because, you know, I, we, we talk about how you and I are like mirrors for one another. <laughs> and so many different points in our lives we've connected with, wow, you know, <laughs> we've had similar experiences or connectors. And that's one foundational piece that I have as well um, with my dynamic duo of my parents, <laughs> too. And, you know, I asked this question of... Um, uh, another guest that I had uh, last month, and uh, it was, do you believe that we choose our parents? Um, and I would love to know what your thoughts are on that. I, I've only come to um, hearing that theory, mm -hmm. uh, I would say probably in the last, probably three or four years. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. it's, it's a fascinating concept, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is. Um, and, and I guess, you know, when I really think about it, I guess I would like to say I would choose these people. It, you know, they have been um, supportive and understanding and loving, and, um, you know, they've provided good examples for me, and they've um, always, you know, taken care of me and, and, you know, hoped for the best for me and all that sort of thing. I don't know that if I, I would have answered that in the same way when I was, say, 15 years old, <laughs> 15 years old, but now a few years later than that, uh, most definitely, I, I, I would have chosen these two people, absolutely. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Impromptu question. <laughs> it just kind of, yeah, yeah. I just always love to hear your thoughts and, you know, your, um, uh, your take on things because we just have had so many deep conversations, um, very spiritually connected um, uh, conversations over the many years that we've been connected. And I just adore, adore you, Tammy. <laughs> well, you know, I think the thing that, 
you know, to think about in terms of, um, you know, would I have chosen these people? Because, you know, the thing I think that people's minds try to immediately go to is that idea that, well, I wouldn't have picked this and I wouldn't have picked this other thing. But, but the truth of that matter is, is that by having those things that you have resistance about, those things that make you feel uncomfortable or not quite, you know, this doesn't, this doesn't seem right to me, it really helps me examine who I am as an individual. So, you know, would I prefer something? Like if I only had uh, parents that reflected who I am, I, I would never have any experience or opportunities for growth or choosing something different for myself. Uh, so, you know, even those things that, that you might not view as um, ideal for yourself, they, they, they really do provide, you know, those push button things are the things that provide opportunities for growth, self-growth and, and introspection. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's one of the work, parts of the work that we do with our clients and people that we connect with. It's really talking about... Um, helping to be, bring more awareness to how that contrast really helps create clarity in our lives and continually to uh, learn and grow. Um, and if we didn't have those experiences, um, we wouldn't be able to define who we are and what resonates for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's it's, yeah, it's constantly a journey, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, no shortcuts, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. So one of the questions I've been asking all of my guests is, are you a mother? Well, I am in the most untraditional of ways. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, do not have children born of me, but I do have nine children that were born from my three sisters. Oh. So uh, I, don't, I do consider those nine children to be very much mine. They are the only children I will ever have in this particular lifetime. Mm -hmm. And I take my role with them very seriously and, um, and playfully as well. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I love interacting with all of the kids and uh, being part of their lives. And I just adore... Um, the relationship that we have, and I love when they're in the house, and, and I love when they go home too. So it's 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 beautiful. It's a wonderful thing. Yes, it is. It is, and you know we can show up in that um, mother role, and if, if you want to put it that way, as far as being an aunt or being an ed like I was as an educator. I had many children that I helped share compassion with and um, love and guidance and um, just like our mothers provide for us um, and you know we all have different experiences um, as a mother or as a daughter and that's really what this series is really all about so thank you for sharing about um, your connection uh, with your nieces and your nephews and I know you all have such fun times and share so many rich stories of your adventures together <laughs> We do, and there's a certain freedom in being the auntie versus being a parent in that, you know, my role with them is generally all about fun. Uh, you know, lots of times it is advice giving, they're thinking about this or that, or, oh, I had this experience and, you know, I'm not feeling well about it or whatever. So there is those components to it. But, you know, my role really isn't about discipline. It's not about making sure you get your chores done or, uh, you know, I do uh, um, help with reading and, and doing school projects and things like that. Um, but it's not about that daily, you know, taskmaster role that parents have to have. And then, and, and similar to what you're saying about in the school system, I mean, there are other children that I interact with on a regular basis that, that aren't my family members. You know, I've been a Girl Scout leader. I've been a Bible school teacher. Um, I, you know, did the kid next door. Sometimes it's the kid in the supermarket, you know, just being that positive female role model or being an encouraging, supportive person uh, is, is, 
it goes a long way and a lot further in even when it's just a one-touch experience that you're having with a child. So don't, uh, just because you don't have children on, of your own, perhaps, don't mm -hmm. underestimate the impact that you can have in their life. Mm. So powerful what you just said. Don't ever underestimate the power that you have to influence a child. That's, you know, really anyone, but children in particular. And I feel like they're our greatest teachers a lot of times. Is that something that you've had experience with as well? Yeah, I was just going because we're the same person. I was just <laughs> make that same comments as well in that, you know, it's not just about me um, imparting my knowledge or whatever on children. It's really sitting back and watching them and how they interact and, mm -hmm. and recognizing those places where I can be more playful or more curious or looking with different eyes, um, you know, that are, you know, the, the maybe perhaps less jaded eyes because they still have that um, perspective that everything is fantastic and that it's all working out for them. And how beneficial is that for me? Incredibly so. So. Yeah. Uh, and they're far more uh, adept at being in the present. Uh, you know, they're not thinking about, um, you know, bills or g going to work or, you know, cleaning the house or are those things that tend to occupy their, you know, minds about, you know, what am I making for dinner? Um, they're, they just know dinner's going to be there. They don't have to think about it. Somebody's going to take care of that for them. So th those are important lessons for me and for adults in general to, to, to kind of glean, just let them be themselves and glean from them and their experiences with their showing of them um, is, 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 is both fun and enlightening. Hmm. Another powerful fun and enlightening. Uh, I just love you, Tammy. I just love connecting with you and having conversation or whether we were trading coaching time to, you know, coach one another. It just uh, it has been an amazing uh, connection um, that we continue on, which is wonderful. It is. It is wonderful. And I feel mm -hmm. the same way about you. It's quite mutual. I adore you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Well, as a daughter, what's one of your favorite memories that you have as being an empowered daughter? Um, yeah, this was a funny, this was a fun question to, to think about the times that I like felt independent. And I think um, the most, the one that really came to mind was when I was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had always relied on my parents or my bicycle or my legs mm -hmm. to get me to where I wanted to go. And I, I had my, my dad um, for my birthday had gotten me my learner's permit. And then my, both of my parents proceeded to, to then teach me to drive, mostly my dad, but both of my parents. Mm -hmm. And it, I, received, I received my driver's license shortly thereafter, and there was that moment of driving away in my car on my own because I'd always had somebody else, you know, with me. It was the first time driving away, and I was so excited about the fact that I had this freedom and that I could go anywhere, and, I, and, like, and that I was just alone, me in my car, and here I go. And I remember my mother hugging me goodbye, and I was just like, you know, you know like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, let's get to the car, you know. Like, so that was my main goal, like just focused on me and what did I need to be doing. And I remember backing down the driveway and looking up at the porch where my mother was actually watching me drive away for the first time, and she was sobbing, and she was waving, and I was just like, that's the weirdest response ever. But then I realized that that was really that moment that are one of the moments. I'm sure there were many along the way, but that, that very real experience of us being very separate, that she had to just trust that I was going to be fine. She was just projecting her love out to me and I was just off to be my own independent self. And so, um, I, I look back on that experience both 
with amusement and you know I remember the annoyance like oh god there she goes again she's crying um, and then but also just recognizing at the level of love and concern that my mom had for me so that um, empowerment of being myself and having that freedom and also the empowerment of recognizing that my mother was letting me go. Yeah. Mm. Wow. That is beautiful. I got chills <laughs> about um, you sharing that moment and that awareness and how time gives us different perspectives too. Okay. But at the moment, there was maybe that annoyance and, you know, some of the, you know, like, what? <laughs> What's going on here? And then being able to look at it, you know, even 20 years ago, but now, you know, 20 years past that time and being able to look at it with different lenses and seeing and feeling that empowerment um, that really was in that moment. And that moment of growth for both of us. You know, she yes. was, you know, I was her oldest child. Mm -hmm. She's letting me go out into the world and, and her just recognizing that, um, that there has to be some level of detachment. Uh, you know, I don't know that I would have labeled it that in that moment, but mm -hmm. you know, that detachment for both of us, I am, you know, yes, definitely still connected with you, but we are separate individual people and, and we each now have to go on with whatever it is that we're doing. So it's true. Um, definitely time offers perspective that was not necessarily there in that moment. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tammy, we are the same person. <laughs> Both being oldest children and having similar experiences, a different storyline, but similar experiences of um, recognizing that letting go that our moms do especially as the oldest child um of you know wanting that independence that freedom for us and and for us to be successful but also the sadness that's there of you're not my little girl as you had been you know or i'm not going to be in that same role as mom uh, moving forward and uh, so there's lots of different pieces you know life is always full of lots of transitions and lots of loss of you know and we can't look at it as just loss because then there's those learning opportunities and there's that growth that happens just as the caterpillar spins itself into the cocoon and then breaks open it to be that butterfly um, that's what life is all about at different points and times. Um, so I know you have a story about a butterfly, <laughs> don't you? It's actually, it's, Crystalis is still on the stick over there on my fireplace mantle. And that's a lot yeah. of time. <laughs> so found his way into my parsley and didn't leave until he flew off. It was quite a learning experience. Yes, I bet. I bet. Did you kind of feel like a mother at that point in time, kind of watching over? <laughs> I did. I was constantly uh, concerned about uh, his location because he had to be outside. I, I knew he had to be exposed to the elements, but I didn't want too many elements. And yeah, right. it was, uh, imagine my delight in the spring when he made it through the winter and he wasn't out of the chrysalis yet. But when I touched the chrysalis, it moved. And I was just like, he's alive. He made it. He made it. <laughs> um, yeah, that was magic. Absolutely magic. Um, yes. I, I, I was a little butterfly mama, for sure. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so tell me about a time that you felt um, disempowered. Uh, yeah, I don't like this question. <laughs> yeah, I know. But it, again, it's that contrast that helps us be able to reflect on that contrast to then recognize and with great clarity some of the things that we have, you know, overcome or embraced to be a part of our story, but it doesn't consume us at, as the story. What are you, my coach or something? <laughs> No, I, I, I do. I get all that. Um, and yes, she, she is my coach. That's <laughs> uh, <laughs> <you are> mine. <laughs> the, 
I think the moment, um, and this is a more recent experience, um, the moment that I felt most disempowered mm -hmm. um, was for my divorce, my recent mm -hmm. divorce. Mm -hmm. And having to explain to my parents that, not even explain, just tell them. <laughs> to just be like, hey, guess what happened today? <laughs> um, you know, like there was no easy way to do that. And to be in that place of like on some level just disbelief that this was my reality, um, this kind of shattering of dreams that this is not quite what I had exp uh, expected of myself or expected for myself. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, that, that place of disappointment. You know, when my parents got married, it was with that whole idea, till death do us part. And I know that they had had you know, ups and downs over the years, but they always found their way back to each other. They always have provided that example of what enduring love is. Like, even when you hate your spouse, <laughs> there is still that level of love and that somehow, I don't know how, this is all going to work out. And so when I couldn't create that for myself, mm -hmm. um, I felt just awful. Like I, I felt a complete failure that, that perhaps in some sort of way that I would let them down, not just, um, you know, be let down by the failure of the marriage, but let down my parents for like somehow maybe they weren't a good example or, you know, whatever, like, I don't know. But the, I think the thing that surprised me the most as I've gone through the divorce and, you know, it's getting further and further away at this point mm -hmm. is their level of love and commitment for me and that they are incredibly supportive. And um, there has not been a moment of, well, what have you done wrong? Or, you know, any sort of like, let's assign blame sort of game going on. It wasn't that at all. It was all about what do you need and how can we help you and how can we support you? And, you know, those little spontaneous things of, you know, why don't you come over for coffee? Or, hey, we're having dinner at such a time. We'd like to see you. Um, not that those things didn't happen before, but but it's almost like they're more important now than they were previously. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the, the example is, or the question is about when did I feel most disempowered? You know, so yes, there was that, but then there was also that growing experience and that um, enhancement of my relationship with my parents because I had always... Um, it was always so important to me that I be independent and that I not rely on them for things and that, you know, yes, I had a relationship with them, but it was, you know, it was, it was supportive and all that sort of thing. But like it, and to feel that um, vulnerability mm -hmm. of just being like, I am so lost. Um, and then having them be my rock so that I could get back to that place of, rebuilding my life as an independent person and then moving on. So um, that disempowerment example is also very much one of empowerment. Yes. Yeah. And it's that, that holding space, that unconditional love, yeah. um, recognizing that, okay, your choice might be different than what my choice is, but I still love you and I'm here to support you. And what a beautiful gift your parents have given you. And I know for myself, that was a gift my parents gave me as well. And it really helped to be able to repair some pieces of our relationship, especially with my mom, um, as I had a similar journey and, um, you know, just being in that disempowered, feeling in that disempowered role of feeling like I was a disappointment um, and or it, it was not what I had envisioned for myself either. So I totally resonate with what you're saying, Tam and Tammy, um, of how that disempowerment can move right into empowerment because 
of the love and the space that is held there of you are my daughter and I love you unconditionally. Um, and that, that, is a, that is a rock of what helps us in relationships. Right, and I think, I think that unconditional love um, also spread out to, for me, to my siblings in a different role as well. Because, you know, growing up as my siblings did this or that, what it was isn't important. But I'd always be like, Mom and Dad, like, why are you put up with that stuff? Or, like, why are you continuing to be supportive? And, you know, uh, just, you know, that kind of very judgmental place I was coming from of, you know, snap out of it. Stop acting that way. Um, and then when it was my turn <laughs> to need help, you know, there was that some level of embarrassment, like, oh, my God, you know, now here I am, we're, you know, relying on my parents in this way. And, you know, it really made me think about how I was judging my siblings in a very different way and seeing, seeing what an incredible support structure our parents really are. And so um, it wasn't just about my relationship with my parents. It was also a better understanding and acceptance of my siblings and the things they've gone through in life as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right there with you. <laughs> wow. Well, um, what are some tools and strategies? You shared some of them as, as we've been sh uh, talking, but what are some tools and strategies that you've gained as a daughter to help your relationships be more real um, with your mom? Um, definitely humor. <laughs> like that's definitely, um, I think, maybe the most important tool that any of us can have or develop in ourselves if it doesn't come naturally. And that's, that's because um, I just no no it's all about that getting to that better feeling place no matter what the situation is even in your deepest darkest moments of whatever it is sadness or despair or anger or you know those places that we don't like to be and we always try and talk ourselves out of being there but for me that first rung on the ladder to climb out of that space is to find what's funny about this. And sometimes, you know, it's, it's not easy to find what's funny in it. But if when you can just, you know, make a joke about it, maybe it's not even a nice joke. Maybe it's just, it's just, it's just something to give you some twisted perspective on what's happening. Because in that moment, you're choosing not to wallow in that sadness or anger or despair. You're choosing, I want to feel differently about this. And so that joke may still be, or that piece of humor may, may still be angry. Um, it may still be sad. It may, you know, maybe, you know, totally, you know, drama queen sort of dramatic. Um, portrayal of the situation that you're currently in um, but for me when I can do that then I, I can I have that moment of realization of saying all right I'm choosing not to be in despair I'm choosing to be funny about despair and now I've got that momentum going that well how how else could I feel better about that and then your brain kicks into problem solving or self-care versus I'm just going to sit here and be depressed about, you know, and stew and think of all these other things I could have said or I should do or about this situation. Your brain moves into a different way of thinking. And, um, and I think that's probably the most important tool. And uh, I definitely get that from my mom and my dad both of them have very wonderful senses of humor very different from each other but um I, you know i see them doing that uh that that something happens um, my father's first response is always nothing's ever easy and then he goes into some sort of joke about why it's never easy and but, but then you know like i said somehow we all just move through whatever that challenge is um that they're either having individually or we're having as a family and it just goes from there so humor humor is the like i said the first rung on that ladder out i love that uh, and it, it's given me a new perspective on humor 
uh, because that's not something that's always been kind of my go-to in the past, in the last probably three, four years. And my mother has been the one that taught me about humor. My dad was always very humorous, but I don't recall my mom. She was more serious, you know, growing up. But in the last two, three years of mom's life, she was very funny and very ornery <laughs> and would approach things with a different level that just kind of made you laugh. And she would joke with you about things. And it was like, you know, even when times were really tough toward the end and there was a lot of grieving going on, it was being able to reach for that better feeling energy or thought and that humor of how she would approach it just helped to help us feel better and be in a better feeling space. Right. So thank you for that reminder of how important humor is. It is. And it's also important to think about um, what you find is funny is not necessarily what those around you might think are funny. Right. You know, there, there have been um, instances where people have said to me, are you going to make a joke about everything? And my response is, yeah, yeah, I am. Um, but that's not necessarily appreciated by, by everyone because that's not necessarily their go-to um, in helping them with um, how they process their life experiences. So, um, yeah, I definitely want to suggest that, but I also want to throw out that, like, you know, that small little word disclaimer that goes really fast at the bottom. <laughs> I'm not responsible for how this is taken. Um, because you, you just don't know. And so, you know, your, your, uh, your jokes may not be as well taken as they are in your own brain. So, yes. And sometimes it's, it needs to just be in our own brain to yeah. help us because that's a tool we use. Mm -hmm. Um, but somebody else may not receive that in the same way. And that's, I think, you know, one of the questions I get from middle school students, uh, is, you know, about the whole joking piece and how things get misconstrued or it's taken in a different way than maybe what it might have been intended from the person. It may not have been meant to be mean or hurtful, but the person that's receiving that isn't in that same place. And that's where we just really have to do that stop and think of, you know, who's going to receive this and how might they receive it? Or is it better just in my head, keeping that humor and keeping me a little bit lighter in the situation. So um, I'm so glad that you brought that up because that's such a important thing to keep in mind um, and to use as a tool because many of us do use that as a tool. Uh, but the, you know, the, the caveat that's there too with it. <laughs> So, oh, awesome. Well, um, what is one of the most fun things that you've experienced as a daughter or as a woman? Uh, maybe it involved your mom. Maybe it does not. Um, what, what would that experience have been for you? The, I, I focused um, my thoughts on this, on my relationship with my mom. Mm -hmm. doing, um, a lot more things together. More, more recently, but I think mm -hmm. the I think the thing in the the common thread in all of them is somewhat of the spontaneity of it. Mm -hmm. That that um, that the various the various um, experiences have not in some ways have been planned, but then they're you know just that that let's do this and okay we're doing it and then enjoying that that process without having everything all laid out. So. Um, you know, some of the, the things that I know that I've really appreciated the most is um, just just things like I've taken my dogs for a walk, mm -hmm. and my idea is I'm going to pop in for five, because we live next door, I live next door to my parents, and we're just going to pop in there for five minutes, say hi, go for the walk with the dogs, and then I find myself um, sitting for a couple hours, drinking coffee, watching my mother knit or crochet, um, while my dad watches news or the weather, on, you know, in the other room, and um, and just being that, it, being in that place that um, I hadn't planned on being that day, even if it kind of shoves the other things that I had planned to the side. Um, I recently unexpectedly won theater tickets um, to a Celtic illusion, you know, kind of comedy shows, magic and comedy. And 
and I I had basically 15 minutes notice that I need that I won the ticket and that I needed to get out of the house in time to go and I just called my mom and said what are you doing? She's like, well, I'm in pajamas and I'm getting ready for bed. And I was like, I want these tickets. Let's go. And, you know, in five minutes, she was at my house, fully dressed and off we went. And it was a fabulous, magical evening. And um, it was cabaret seating. And we ended up sitting with two women that we had never met before that were an absolute riot. They were the perfect people for us it with and like the whole thing was just so much fun and it could have been so easy for me to go I have 15 minutes notice to figure this all out and just be just say forget it they were free I didn't pay for them who cares but I didn't I said yes to it and that spontaneousness of my mother going yes to it as well and what a wonderful evening we had like the, it was just really fun um and then um there's also another fun thing that I don't know that she had fun while she was doing it, but it was fun for me. And then uh, I know that she had fun with the result of it, but I um, have taken photography classes. It's a hobby of mine. And I did a series of photographs for one of my projects called My Mother's Hands. And it was a series of photographs that was all about the, the millions of ways that my mother cares for us. And that's whether it's, you know, cooking food or knitting, like I already said, or um, changing diapers or doing laundry. And they were all those motherly tactile um, ways that she shows she cares for us that aren't necessarily verbal or, um, or you know, demonstrative in a way that, is being told to you, it's something that you need to sit back and observe on your own. And I know that when when we did it, like I think like she fidgeted a lot and and she uh, was just like, is this right? Like she had like she wasn't like so like she wanted to be the perfect model sort of thing and um and and I don't know that she was comfortable with the process. But when I showed her the pictures later, and it was actually much later, I want to say maybe not until Mother's Day last year, I think, um, now that I'm thinking about it, is the first time she saw it as a collection. And I know she loved them because she now uses one of the photographs um, as her profile picture on Facebook. Um, but, you know, that was a really wonderful experience as well um, that I think, you know, after the fact was a good experience for both of us. Um, and, and, and to have that kind of enduring testament of how I see my mother and how I see how she cares for all of us. And that I can not only show that to other people, but have that available for my own family members. So, you know, they can go, oh yeah, she does do that. And she does do that. And she does do this other thing. Um, it's sort of my um, photographic ensemble of um, appreciation for all that my mother does um, that mostly goes unsaid and unacknowledged, um, but my photographs are a way for me to capture that and acknowledge the existence of what she does for us. Thank you for sharing that, Tammy. That is so beautiful. And what a, a way to um, capture that, not just here in your mind of a memory, but that visual component that will live on and lives right here in your heart, as well as, as, well as living in her heart, because it touched her with the acknowledgement of the things that go unsaid many times, but you captured in these beautiful photographs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I purposefully chose to do it in black and white film so as not to distract by vivid colors or um, the visual stimulation of it. I really just wanted that, I hate to use the word stark, but that's the word that's coming to mind, that stark black and white imagery so that there was no question about the story. It wasn't about, oh, look at that flower because now she's gardening. It was about her hands and in the dirt and, you know, all of that sort of thing. And, um, and so I think that was a component of it as well, is that it was, you know, there's no question about 
the story or what you're looking at. And I think the black and white film, uh, and it was film, not digital. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it, the black and white film really helped um, tell that story. Yeah. Mm. Well, stories are so important, aren't they? Yeah. 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 Well, um, I'm going to do one more question before we kind of close up, if that's okay with you. And um, what is a book that you and your mom have both read that you've enjoyed? I thought this question was really funny because my mother loves romance novels. So oh. I hate them. <laughs> um, we both do like historical books. Mm -hmm. There are things that, that we both read, but, but when I had to think about a story that, um, we both really appreciate, and that means a lot to us on many levels. And that is um, the Book of Ruth from the Bible. Um, mm -hmm. That that book means a lot to us. Um, I think probably on the surface, primarily because um, Ruth is my mother's mother's name. My grandmother, my nana, is Ruth. Um, but also for who Ruth was or is um, shown as in the Bible. You know, Ruth's um, name in Hebrew means friends or friendship. Um, Ruth was known to be very, very kind. And that's actually one of the things about the story of Ruth. Like, it, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, um, like the individual components or, or um, the storyline even. The importance of it for me, and I think for my mother as well, is who Ruth was. You know, so her name meaning friendship, her personality being very kind, you know, that's shown in, in contrast to the other characters in the story and and how she portrays herself. Like it could be it would be so easy for her to just be that unkind person right back to them. And she's not, she, she remains her kind of glorious self and, and true to her inner self. And the other thing that Ruth is really known for is her loyalty, her loyalty to not only herself, but her family as well. Mm -hmm. And so I think that um, that story, it's one of the shorter um, complete books of the Bible, but I think that story of Ruth and who she is um, helps guide who I want to be and I think helps guide who uh, my mother is and who she wants to be and, and is also, you know, the storyline is different, but it's also who we envision Ruth, um, her mother, my grandmother, to be as well. And um, it's a beautiful story. It is. It is. And thank you for reminding me about the book of Ruth or the story of Ruth um, because I had forgotten some of that or maybe didn't learn all of that when I was a child as well. And that just uh, connects so beautifully to uh, all, for all women, but especially as mothers and as daughters uh, and that connection that you two have with that story. So thank you so much for sharing that, Tammy. You and uh, that was actually one of the photographs in the series as well. That um, mm -hmm. the photos that I had taken of my mother it was with her, oh. with her Bible open and her hands next to it uh, with the title page of Ruth. And uh, that's probably my favorite in the series. There's many good ones, but that was probably my favorite in the series. Wow. Well, that was a perfect question for you then, wasn't it? <laughs> Oh, well, you know, we could just go on and on and on. We've been known to talk for hours upon hours. <laughs> yes. yes, but um, I want to just close with how can people get in touch with you, Tammy, or um, learn more about how you help serve people and assist people, um, or just to get to know you better? What, uh, what's a way that they can get in touch with you or connect? Well, um, I have a website. It's uh, zestforjoy.com. Zest for Joy is all one word. And all of my contact information is in there. I have a free meditation for people who are looking to have uh, just a short downtime to kind of refocus their energies in a, in a positive, uplifting place. So check that out. It's absolutely free. 
and um, there's information about me and my coaching uh, right and and contact information as well, all right there. Perfect. Zestforjoy.com. Zestforjoy.com, and I will also put that at the end of the um, video as well, so that uh, people can uh, connect with you or learn more about uh, you and and how you help people. So uh, fabulous. Well, I just am thrilled to have had this time together, Tammy, and I know that I learned a lot more about how embracing relationships and, and being real, you know, that real empowerment allows love, uh, really is that thread that uh, binds us all together um, as mothers, as daughters, as women in this world. And uh, may it be a sense of empowerment uh, for the listeners and, and people who are watching. And uh, we will be doing another interview. Uh, I will be doing one with another guest uh, next month. And I hope that you will tune in. And uh, please feel free to leave your comments, uh, any questions that you might have in the comments uh, below the video. And uh, until next time, uh, continue to be real, and uh, that means real empowerment allows love. Allow that for yourself and for others in your connections. Take care, be well, be true, and be you. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Tammy.